نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمد لله اوكي السلام عليكم so we go again uh, our, our our third session on tazkiyah and as we said basic just keep in mind you know tazkiyah of the soul tazkiyah of the heart you know again it's uh it's about you know removing those blamesworthy and evil things from the heart and the character and to adorn the heart with the, with the praiseworthy you know and and, and the good uh, traits alhamdulillah okay so that's what that's so, so that's what it's about bottom line again to remove the evils and the diseases and to adorn the heart with, with good virtuous you know traits alhamdulillah okay so last in our last session we talked about uh uh some of the evils that we need to rid our hearts of. Okay, but before we get into that, there's one beautiful hadith I read and I wanted to share it with you because it's very relevant to our our topic. You know, this this tazkia, this purification of the heart and soul. <sighs> very comprehensive, man. Beautiful though, man. All right. And the more you get into it, the more I prepare for it, the more Allah just opens up so many things for 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 me and for us, because I want to share it with you, okay? It's a beautiful hadith here. I was reflecting upon it, you know, it's, it's, right in, it's right in tune with, you know, the whole idea of cleaning and polishing and keeping the heart clean, you know. And so Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Verily, when the servant commits a sin, a black spot, a black mark appears upon his heart. If he abandons the sin, seeks forgiveness and repentance, then his heart will become polished. Stop, think for a moment. Because when I read it, and I've read it many times, but at this time it just hit me another, another kind of way. You see? This whole process of purification and teski of the heart to make it sound and good, right? Okay? Like, like the Quran says, you know, you know, he, you know on the day of judgment, when we appear before Allah, He does not, you know, He who, you know, Allah will not accept, you know, uh, you know, the wealth and your children. And, and, you know, that that won't make a difference in the sight of Allah. What will make a difference is a sound heart, clean heart. So you'd be thinking, wow, this this, this sound heart, this whole uh, 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 notion of taski and purifying the heart and purifying the soul, Subhanallah. You know, it's not difficult. You know, so when you look at this hadith here, it's a you can sin, which we all do, right? But if you repent of the sin, right? You repent of the sin, that's the tuskia. <laughs> that's the tuskia. And you see? You know, that's the tuskia. You, you, don't, you don't wipe the heart clean. SubhanAllah. Reminds of another hadith that the Prophet saw when he said, he who, he who commits, he who repents of a sin, it's a good idea. He who repents of a sin is like he who has not committed any sin. It's right in line with that idea. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So, the, so part of the, t the taskia, the purification of the heart, is the repentance, man. <laughs> it's an ongoing process, okay? But alhamdulillah, and the rest of the hadith again, uh, uh, if he returns to the sin, the blackness will increase, see, until it over, until it overcomes his heart, see. All right, it becomes dark, man. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't repent, see. All right, and it is a cover. It is the cover that Allah has mentioned in the Quran, in in in, in Surah eighty three, fourteen. It says, "No, rather, a covering is over their hearts." from what they have earned, the covering over the heart, what they have earned, meaning the sins, you see. So I thought that was a very beautiful hadith to start our session. 
<laughs> you know, again, okay, so uh, hadith is by Imam Tirmid, and this is a Sahih hadith, alhamdulillah, okay? So we will continue to talk about some of those things, and, and the things that we're talking about, not everything, you know, it's, it's so much, you know, but these are some of the major things I chose, you know, to, uh, to highlight, you know, because many of us, you know, we, you know, we, we can find our, ourselves somewhere in there, you know, things that we have to work on, all right? And so, so, so far we covered arrogance and pride, we covered greed and love of the dunya, we've covered envy, we've covered self-amazement, you know, self-righteous, think you better than what you are, you know, uh, uh, hypocrisy or, or, or ria, we've covered that, you know, some of the, and we covered, and we covered backbiting, which is another disease, so, you know, and so that's where we left off at, alhamdulillah. And so we have one, two, three, we have four more, I didn't get a chance to finish because of the time. All right. And I was trying to wrap things up, you know, uh, by today, but mm -mm, I got I to do another session, inshallah, because it's just too, it's just, it's, it's just so rich, so much good information. And all information and, and, and the information I'm talking about is what the Prophet taught us. Nothing strange, it's just we don't read, we don't study. It's all there. If you want to purify yourself, all you got to do is go right to, right to the sunnah. It's all there. You, gotta, you, know, you don't need any elaborate books by, you know, whoever, okay? Past or present. You go right to the sunnah, and you get it all. You get it all. Because the Prophet said something, he laid it all out for us. All right? you, know, he, you know, he told us, you know, the, 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 these problems and these issues, and he gave us the cure, you know see, in the Quran and the sunnah. So they're all there. It's just a matter of finding them. So that's what I've been doing, you know, extracting stuff from different books and different scholars and putting it all together and whatnot give you a nice little package that you can work with on a practical level, okay? To make it easy and simple. Because some of those books you get into, man, subhanAllah, whew, this will be way up there, there talking about some stuff. See, so I can't even, <laughs> I can't even break down, okay? So, I, I, inshallah, I want to keep it basic, basic, you know, for, for, for the brothers and the sisters and, and people who are listening, you know, to these talks, alhamdulillah. So, we move on to the uh, next disease, and that, that is the, the, the disease of lust. You know, desires, or, or what we call, you know, uh, the disease of looking. <laughs> gazing at what you shouldn't be gazing at. You know, like a loved one's love. And ask the believing men to lower their gaze and guide their private parts. Guard their, guard their private parts. Or, or guard, you know, guard their, their, check their modesty. Huh? All right? And ask the believing women you know, to lower their gaze and guard their private parts or, you know, or their modesty. You see what I'm saying? All right? And so this is in the Quran, alhamdulillah, you know, basically, you know, and so we're told to lower our gaze, you know. And so the, so the Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is Sahih Bukhari Hadith, he said, he said, uh, in one, in one narrative, he said, um, all, the, all the sons of Adam, all the sons of Adam has his share of Zina. All the sons of Adam has, have his share of Zina, Zina, fornication. Everybody got a share. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> but the prophet explains. He said, the eye, the eyes, you know, when it looks, see, that's why he put them, what? Lower the gaze. You see? You know, so when you look, you know, at a female after sex, you know what I'm saying? You know, then, you know, uh, it's why last month I said lower the gaze, I see? Because, you know, because, you know, your eyes connected to your heart. <laughs> you're looking, <sighs> you know, you're looking. You see, that's what the Prophet told Ali, Ibn Abi Talib, you know, look. Young man, if you see, if you accidentally, you know, if you just see a person just in passing, the first glance, the natural, you see a, a person, a, 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 a beautiful female, and, 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 and you be attracted, you know, you see, the first look natural, you see, you're excused for it. Not that, not that it's right, but you're excused. Allah forgive you. But if you take another look, you've transgressed. <laughs> You do, you do a double take. No, you can't do that. You see what I'm saying? All right? So it's natural. You know, so, so again, everybody has their, you know, as this hadith say. So, so the eyes, it's the eyes, you know. And remember the Prophet he said, you know, you know uh, uh, the beautiful women, you know, 
you know, you know, when they move, move, move about publicly, you know, they, they become an arrow of the devil. So it's the devil's arrow. He, the devil's arrow is the women because they're beautiful. And you, whoop, you look, hey, you see what I'm saying? It becomes, sometimes it becomes, it becomes a disease with some people. You see what I'm saying? So you have to check it, okay? And so Allah SWT in the Quran, you know, when he mentioned and as the believing men to lower their gaze and God, the private parts. It's interesting, Allah mentioned lowering the gaze and God in the private parts. He, he went right to the private parts because ultimately that's, that, that's what it can lead to. You see, as I tell you that, see? So, so the eye has its share of fornication. The tongue has its share of fornication, right? Speaking, you know, the, uh, when he speaks, okay? All right? And the hand, you know, has its share of fornication. His feet as they walk, you see? Toward, you know, uh, you, you, you move toward that, you see? And then the desire to do it or not to do it. See? And then the private parts will confirm that. See? You actually go ahead and commit the effort. You know, after you go through all of those phases, looking and talking and walking and the meat and then the touch. You see what I'm saying? You didn't have the desire now. Ooh, I mean, it's, it's rearing up in your heart. Now you, you're ready to go. <laughs> if you don't have no top one, no fear of the law, the heart ain't clean, man. You know? Then it's going to confirm. You know, your private part going to confirm it and you're going to commit the whole act. So, so it comes in phases. It can happen. So all of that is a, is a portion of zina, from the Prophet you see. So 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 nobody's totally free of it. <laughs> you see, nobody's totally free of it. All right, everybody had all the sons of Adam have their portion. You see, and you deal with it. Look at the hadith of the Prophet Sallam. There's several hadith, two hadiths where the Prophet Sallam was once he saw a beautiful woman, the, the messenger of Allah, the messenger of Allah, the, the purest and the cleanest. You know what I'm saying? One authentic hadith, you know, you know, he was, he was, you know, he saw a beautiful woman and he, he goes home and has a relation with his wife. You see what I'm saying? And he comes back and tells the people, you know, they thought, Yara you know, and he, and he told the people, I saw this beautiful woman I was attracted to. Shaitan threw his arrow. So I went home to my wife. And so, this, so if this happened to you, you do the same thing. You go home to your wife. You see, you don't follow your, you see what I'm saying, your, your, your desires, you see what I'm saying? That's what the Prophet was teaching us and whatnot, okay? And that's why you should get married, all right? And that's how you, and then, that's how you touch skill, that, ish, that, ish, that, that situation, you see what I'm saying? Get married, what the Prophet was saying, young men, those of you who can afford to get married, and those who can't, he said, fast, restrain yourself, okay? So, so the whole idea of the, 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 the lust, I mean, you know, again, Allah SWT has given us ways to, to fight that, those, those urges and, and, and those desires. So we have to work on it. We have to work on it, you see? And uh, uh, and, and show you how things can get. You know, the other hadith, selected by Imam Ahmed, you Allah be pleased with him, where the man, young man, the young man came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, allow me to fornicate. <laughs> see, 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 see the lust in his heart. He was desiring somebody. Or somebody's, okay? And he asked the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, allow me to commit zina, fornicate. So the Prophet, so of course the companion, they ready to beat him up. He said, how dare you, shame on you. And the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with his gentle self and his compassion, and he pulled him close. Come here, come here, come here, son. And he said, and he said would you like someone to fornicate with your mother? No, so he was appalled by it. Oh, no? And he sort of probably went through a series and said, would you like someone to fornicate with your sister? Would you like somebody to fornicate, you know what I'm saying, with your daughter, you know, or your aunt? He, you know, he mentioned a series of, of women, you know, in his family. He said, no. He said, no way, you know. He said, well, likewise, no one wants you to fornicate with their mother. He said, if you fornicate with someone, you're going to be fornicating with somebody's mother or somebody's, you know, sister or daughter or aunt. So just like you wouldn't like it, they wouldn't like it either. So he thought, wow. You see, so, Allah, uh, so the prophet, you know, cured him. The prophet made dua to Allah. Oh, Allah, you know, remove that lust and that desire from his heart. From his heart. Because it was in his heart. You see what I'm saying? Pan Allah, man. And he said that after that, he never had the desire no more. Okay. <laughs> he was clean. Heart was clean. You see? But the prophet put the dua on him, you see? But the prophet taught him too, you see? See? That's the process. That's, you know, 
And you look at you see, you know, those are like practical things that the prophets of some showed us and taught us how to clean, keep ourselves clean from the diseases that attack us all. Okay, alhamdulillah. And uh, so alhamdulillah, you know, uh, and we can go on and on and on, but again, those are the things we all have to work on. You know, the look, lowering the gaze, that's a battle, you see? But when you make those mistakes, you know, uh, uh, you, you, you got to turn to Allah. You got to seek refuge in Allah, Allah help me. Allah make, you know, make do with a lot of guides. That's what you got to do. You just can't let it go. You know, you got, you got to work on it, you see? And that's what the purification is, you see, all right? And know, that, know that these are sins that, that, that are there, and, you know, and that can lead you into you know, the actual act itself, if you're not careful, that's the whole thing. That's why, again, the prophet told us, go home to your wife. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Go to your own wife, you see. When you get that kind of urge of you, that feeling come over you like that, okay? No. Um, the next one is, uh, at, least one, I, 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 at least, inshallah, hope to finish these four, inshallah. The next one is uh, hatred. Enmity. I can't stand him. I can't stand her. You know, you know, I, you know I, I've heard Muslims say things like that. And I was like, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh, and that's something a Muslim should never say. You know, because the Prophet said a believer should not hate another believer. Simple. And, and the Prophet said, and do not hate each other. Do not envy each other. You see, do not, you know, uh, uh, undercut each other. You know, do not leave each other in the lurch. In, in, in a number of different hadiths, he mentioned several things. And one of those he mentioned, do not hate each other. You see? So this is not a characteristic of a believer. Not a good trait. Because a believer is supposed to want for his brother what he wants for himself. A believer is supposed to, you know, uh, think good of his brother. It's still a Muslim. So there's no way you, 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 you entertain in your heart, you know, you know, uh, I got bad blood, you know, we, we got bad blood, bad blood, you know, that, that's a street thing, you see, from the dunya, but the bad blood between him and me, you know, Muslim, you see, see, I would be ashamed to tell anybody I didn't like another Muslim, I said, we don't get along that well, but he's my brother and whatever I, he needs, I, so forth and so on, that's one thing, but to say, I can't stand him, or I don't like him, or I hate him, we shouldn't say, it. keep that to yourself. That's a disease. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Some people will annoy you, right? You know, you'll encounter a Muslim that will annoy you, get on your nerves, but don't say, I can't stand them. That's your brother. That's your sister. You see? What well, the Prophet Prophet said, you know, hey, you know, every Monday and Thursday, think about it. Every Monday and Thursday, the angels come and they, they, they take your deeds up to Allah to be examined. Your good deeds are Mondays and Thursdays. That's why the Prophet used to like to fast on those days, right? And Allah grants forgiveness. Forgive them their sins, you know what I'm saying? You know, except those who between, there's enmity and hatred between, until they reconcile. Okay? So the Prophet of is teaching us when you have issues with each other, don't let, three days, don't let no more than three days go by before you take care of that. That's the idea. You know, work it out, work it out. Don't let six months go by, three months go by, a year go by. And, Stop speaking to him. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to give him salam and stuff like that. This is a disease. That ain't, that ain't nothing that, that, that ain't nothing that, that a, 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 a God-fearing Muslim, a pious Muslim, a good Muslim, but have in his chest. <laughs> see? You see what I'm saying? And so, so again, it's something that we have to reflect upon and work on. And these are the human, you know, uh, uh, issues, you know, the, the, these things, they, they happen, all right? So we have to work on Everybody goes through these things, but you got to work on it. That's, 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 that's what we mean by getting rid of these, these ills and these diseases, you know? They, so they, because they're sicknesses and whatnot. And it impacts how you act on the outside, you know? You know? The heart reflects what's, whatever you feel in your heart against that sister or that brother and what's going to impact how you treat them. <laughs> how you treat them, you see? All right? And so make sure that stuff, you know, that hatred, that enmity is not in your heart. He said that you can treat your brother and your sister, man, with, with, with fairness and, and, with, and, and with what is due to them, you know, as a Muslim. He said, I don't hate no Muslim, you know. Uh, so again, you know, uh, you know, avoiding the hatred if it's there. Just, alhamdulillah, get it out and whatnot, you know. Asking Allah to remove it, alhamdulillah. And, uh, 
you know, um, you know, beautiful story. One of the companions was uh, coming in the mosque, and the Prophet was sitting with the Sahaba, and he said, Salah, Salah, you know, and a, a person is going to come through that door uh, that was good, and he's going he's gonna to get paradise. He's going to deserve paradise. You know? And so the person came through, and the next day, the same person came in again. The prophet said, so and so, a person is going to come through that door, and that person is going to get paradise. And it happened a third day. You know, a person is going to come through that door, he's going to get paradise. So it's the same person all, all three times. Came through the door, and the prophet said, he's going to get paradise. So one of the companions, I'm like, wondering, well, like, why is he going to get paradise? Why did the prophet say it? Prophet probably, you know, of course the prophet knew something they didn't know, okay, for sure, all right? And, and, and really, when you look at it, you know, uh, it's, it's a teaching lesson for us because what happened was the companion, the story goes to the companion, you know, he, he wanted to know what, what, what is this Sahaba doing <laughs> that I ain't doing? I'm around the prophet probably and telling me I'm going to paradise, you can imagine? You know why prophet said three days in a row, this person's going to paradise. So what he did, he went to the brother's house, to the Sahaba's house, and made up some excuse. You know, I, I don't have a place to stay right now. My father put me out. Well, I need a place to stay for a couple of nights. Will you allow me to stay? And the, and, the, and the brother let him stay. And so he stayed in his house for several nights, just watching him, observing him, you know, see what he does, so forth and so on. You know what I'm saying? And then after th about three days, he said, look, in a few days, he said, look, man, I, I must confess, I, I just told you that story just so I can come and, and live with you, so I can see what you, what, what do you do in the house? You know, because the prophet said, I'm saying, you know, you came in the city the other day, you know, Three, three, day, three nights in a row, he said, you're going to paradise, man. You see? So I want to know what you did. So I wanted to observe you and see what you did. So I can do that so I can get to paradise too. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? That's what it was. And so, so the Sahaba said, the companion said, well, you know, as you can see, I don't do no more than what everybody else do. But one thing I never do. When I go to bed at night, when I go to bed at night, I don't have no enmity in my heart against any Muslim. That's what it was. <laughs> he didn't have the disease of enmity. He didn't hate no Muslim man. And so for that, perhaps the Prophet said, I'm saying, you're going to paradise. You see what I'm saying? So you never know. You know. And so when we, when we read these stories in the Hadith, you know, we, you know, we should subhanAllah, take them to heart. Take them to heart, man. And they, you know, they're, they're, they're very practical things and, and they're meaningful things and help us in our own deen and our own development. You know, you know it's, it's, it's a beautiful feeling when you can feel that you don't have no, no enemies. <laughs> like, you know, uh, among, you know, amongst Muslims, put it that way. Okay? Amongst Muslims. You don't want to, you don't want to think like that. That ain't where you're supposed to be. Especially with all of the things that the Prophet has taught us about brotherhood, you know, and about the rights of each other. See? And, uh, and we all have to work on that. Muslims Muslim got to work on it. Look at the Muslim world today. We got to work on it, man. We, we in bad shape. The brotherhood and the sisters, we in bad shape. It's terrible. And we just ignore all these beautiful teachings. You know, it's like the Prophet Sallallahu said, you know, do not become unbelievers after me cutting each other's necks off. We didn't listen. We didn't listen. We didn't listen. We, didn't listen. we just kill it up. We've been killing up each other, man, over a thousand years, man. And still doing it today. You see? Hatred and animosity, you know, and try to justify it with all kinds of excuses. But, we, but we've gotten away from Tuskia, purification of the heart, the diseases. That's what it is, man. You see? Uh, so, me, the last one trying to help us, me, the last one trying to protect us from the disease of hatred. Okay? Another one is anger. You know, it's a disease. You know, anger. The Prophet said, so the strong man, the strong man, or woman is not the one that can wrestle or throw someone down, or the one that with the physical strength. The strong person is the one that can control his anger, who control that animal. Because once that animal gets unleashed, it's crazy what it does. The kind of damage it anger. Some people, they can't control their anger, man. <laughs> you see? And so there's several hadith what the Prophet gave. You know, the man came to the Prophet, asked the advice. The Prophet said, don't get angry. Don't get angry. Don't get angry. You see? All right. And so we have to work on these things. You know, anger's there. You see, so one, you know, again, it, it, it doesn't have that strong connection with Allah, and that conscious of Allah, 
and what he owe Allah, what he owe his fellow Muslims and fellow humans, subhanAllah, you know, anger goes, you know, knows no limit. They go off. So they need to be controlled. Except anger for the sake of Allah. Anger for the sake of Allah. Alhamdulillah, somebody violates Allah, you know. It's like the Prophet, sallam, you know, when people would do things to him. Right? He would never get angry. People would abuse him. He would get angry and take revenge. But if they did something in, in, in violation of Allah's law, see, they would get angry for the sake of Allah. That's different. You see, you can, you know, anger is there for a reason, okay? You're angry for Allah, you're angry for the cause of Allah, so you can defend Allah's deen, alhamdulillah. Okay. But you're being angry, just anger, you, you know, to, to harm your brother because you're angry at your brother, or your sister, or your wife, you know. It's, just, it's amazing how, you know, like since uh, this uh, uh, crisis, uh, uh, of this coronavirus crisis, uh, and, and everybody been like on lockdown, it'd be amazing you hear in the news what well, all kinds of statistics, how domestic violence is on the increase. <laughs> domestic violence on the increase in the home because the men are home with their wives and family now. And they they bored and they angry and uh, they they pff, they be abusing their family. They can't control their anger. So so anger is, is, is a real serious problem, you know. And uh, so it's something that uh, you know. We have to always be mindful of and make sure, alhamdulillah, we keep our hearts straight from that. You know? There's a very beautiful ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal kadimin al ghayza wal aafina anin nas. You know? Allah describes in this verse here uh, the, uh, the, the qualities of, 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 of suppressing your anger. Like, you know, these are the righteous people. Allah describes the righteous people as those who, who, who suppress their anger and they pardon men. It's one of the characteristics of the believers. See, that's, that's, that's tuskia. That's purification, you see. Think about it. You know, those who restrain their anger, see, and pardon people. See, that's, that's an inner, you know, those are inner traits, man. You see what I'm saying? You know, to be able to do that, to be a forgiving person, you know, a merciful person. Like the Prophet was. Well, SubhanAllah, man. <laughs> can't get it no better than that. I mean, the Prophet was the embodiment of, of purification of the heart and the soul, the things that he did. All you got to do is look at his example and follow it. But we don't do that. We don't follow the Prophet's example. We mention his name, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know what I'm saying? We hear his name in Jummah and lectures and stuff, you see, you know. All the different scholars and students of knowledge giving talks and lectures about the Prophet of Salaam. But do, we, but do we take it to heart and go back, you know, and live this stuff? That's what you got to do. You see, you got to change. Like, a, like in the, one, the, the other session, the first, you know, the last session, I mentioned the, the example of Jaffa ibn Abi Talib when he speak before the negus. You see? See, that's the example. That's the, that's the, the prototype of Tashkia. You see? Say, oh, king, we used to worship idols. We used to drink blood or eat carrion, you know, and, you know uh, dead animals, you know, and we were unchaste and we were immoral and we were abominable in our behavior. We were truthful. We were liars. We drank wine. We did it all. And then Allah said, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <laughs> see what I'm saying? You know, who we all knew. See, that's the whole idea. So they, so they made the change. And that's what I was emphasizing by re reading that piece to you, you know. And we need to read that every now and then. Open up the Syrah book and read that piece. Wow. Wow, it's about changing. You see, it's about adopting a, a lifestyle or a, 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 a traits and characteristics, you know, and, and, and character, you know, that reflects, you know, the religion of Al Islam and what the Prophet Islam brought us. You see, so Alhamdulillah. Uh, so may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala help us, you know, to overcome our uh, uh, anger or you know this disease. We have that disease, Inshallah. And remember, when we do something out of anger, you know, in any of these things for that matter, the key is always what? Tauba. See, the key is always, when we, when we know we, you know, if, 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 if these diseases are not in us, but they, they prop up every now and then, or they, you know, they, we, we know how to deal with it, because we know this is wrong. So we have to turn to Allah and Allah will polish the heart clean, right? That's why I open up with that other hadith. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So the last one, alhamdulillah. 
seeking status and fame. You know, you know, that's again another blamesworthy trait. People, they want to be famous. <laughs> they want to be known. You know, it's, it's like you know, it's, you know they, they want to be seen. They want to be recognized. You see what I'm saying? That's not a good thing. The Muslim is supposed to, the Muslim supposed to be modest. You know, the, 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 the character, the quality of modesty. And, you know, love, humbleness, you know. It's, it's a kind of arrogance, kind of. It's, it's, it's connected with the whole notion of to be seen, to be recognized. You see what I'm saying? And we only want Allah want Allah to recognize us, you see. You know? and, there may, and there may be some instances where there's some, a person may seek some legitimate status, you know what I'm saying? because of some, some skills he has that no one else has and he, he wants to offer. And scholars talk about that. And what, and that's not a bad thing. Like the, they use the example of Yusuf. Prophet Yusuf, subhanAllah. You know, he told hey, you know, put me, put me in charge of the storehouses. <laughs> see? You know what I'm saying? You know, I got the skills to handle that. You see what I'm saying? It's a good intention and whatnot. So, so we're not talking about people like that or anybody like that. We're talking about people who, you, you, you have people who fake it. They pretend like they know. They pretend to be wealthy, pretend to be knowledgeable. You see what I'm saying? Pretend to be pious. You see what I'm saying? So they do it to get, to get a name for themselves. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's even worse. You see, because that's hypocrisy. You see? And so, uh, but again, just the whole idea of uh, uh, wanting to be high and mighty. That's the idea. That's the idea, idea behind uh, uh, seeking you know, fame. You see? All right, and status, you know, to be high, be of the high, uh, the high and mighty ones, as Allah mentions in the Quran, uh, uh, the English translation. As for the bold of the hereafter, we grant it only to those who do not seek to exalt themselves on the earth. You see, you know, and the Prophet said, "Many a disheveled man, covered with dust." And weary, uh, wearing worn, worn out clothes passes unnoticed, will be in your midst unnoticed. But were he to uh, 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 ask Allah, Allah would answer his request. Allah. Oh, he ain't nobody. He ain't, you know, he ain't, you know, he's not of the high, high and mighty one, you see. And the Prophet said, Shall I not inform you about the people of paradise? Mm. They are the weak people and those people that's unnoticed. Shall I tell you of the people of hell? They are the proud and the disdain. They are the people who are proud and disdainful of others. See? They want to be high and mighty in status and fame. See? The Prophet said, Two hungry wolves are less harmful. To a, you know, to a flock of sheep, then a, a, a person is seeking wealth and prominence. You know what I'm saying? You know, as that is more that is more that is more dangerous. You know, a person who's seeking wealth and prominence. You know, to their religion. You see, yeah. seeking wealth and prominence is dangerous to a person's religion. Just like two wolves in the midst of sheep. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? It's more dangerous. You see? That's more dangerous, you see, because wealth and promise can bring a person down. You see? So those are just some of the uh, uh, references or some of the hadiths that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in regards to the whole idea of seeking. And there's more, but alhamdulillah, just, just so you get the gist of it, alhamdulillah. And uh, I always try to keep that whole thing about fame and wanting to be seen and proud and, you know, high and mighty. It's always about, you know, it's always about being humble. You know what I'm saying? Alhamdulillah. So Allah SWT sees, he knows. So alhamdulillah. Uh, having said that, we'll stop there, inshallah. Uh, we'll continue. Uh, I, think I, I think I can wrap it up in two more sessions, inshallah.